By taking just a few small details into account, you can build a fluid and natural feeling first person camera in 3.js without too much work that you can use in your games and other projects. I think my first experience with first person camera games as a kid was playing stuff like Duke Nukem 3D, Quake, that kind of stuff. That was ages ago at this point, but the genre is still alive and well today with examples like Overwatch, Apex Legends, and, well, Doom again, but like the new one. Anyway, the concept is reasonably simple. Instead of kind of creepily following a character around like you're in a drone or something, you can imagine first-person cameras as being more from the point of view of the character. So imagine the camera is actually just wedged right into their face. Or maybe even more accurately, since most of the time you seem to be able to see hands and guns and stuff, the camera is sticking right through their chest. That's a bit more accurate. As for building one, well, it turns out that 3.js already has one. See this terrain tutorial here? This uses the 3.js first-person camera controls. Wherever I point the mouse, it looks in that direction, eventually. And I can move around using the WASD keys, or I guess the, whatever you want to call them, the Doom keys. So WS brings you forwards and backwards, and A and D let you strafe side to side. We can peek at the source code for this thing and see that it's pretty easy to set up. There's just a few lines of code that's involved, and that's about it. So here. I've already set up a basic skeleton of a scene using the same code as my physics tutorial, probably because it was the last thing I worked on, and at the top here I've imported the first-person controls.js file. After that I just need to instantiate an instance of the controls. In the initialization code here, I create the first-person controls, set a couple parameters, and we're good to go. So this works. I mean, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise, this comes with 3.js. But the problem is that, well, It'll need some work. I mean, it does the job just fine if you just want to add some quick first-person controls to a project, but if you want to use this for a game, it's definitely going to need a lot more polish. So of course, we'll build one from scratch, because that's often my answer to things. So first thing we need to do is capture input. Specifically, we need to intercept both the keyboard and the mouse input. I'm building out this class here. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling this an input controller, and in the initialize function, we just need to accomplish a few key things. We want to declare the current input from both the mouse and the keyboard, and then we want to attach to event listeners for both the mouse and the keyboard events. The reason that we're storing this in current input is because you can't just pull the current state of the mouse and keyboard each frame when you're doing your camera logic, at least not in the browser. So as the mouse is moved and the keys are pressed, we stash the current state of the mouse and keyboard in the class, and that lets us query for the mouse and keyboard state later. Awesome, eh? The next step is implementing the actual first-person camera itself. So I'll start by declaring this first-person camera class, and that really only needs one parameter, the actual 3.js camera that is kind of puppeting. Down in the scene initialization for the app, we'll instantiate our first-person camera and pass it the 3.js camera. We also need to make sure that in the step function, we call the update function so that the camera can actually perform all of its logic. In the constructor, we need a couple things. We need the input, obviously, otherwise we can't react to mouse and keyboard events, so I've declared an input controller, and we've got some miscellaneous member variables like rotation and translation of the camera, which I've represented by a quaternion and a vector 3. So now, the first thing we need to do is actually look in the direction that we want to look in. And for a first-person camera, this isn't super complex. What this amounts to is figuring out how far the mouse has moved relative to the last frame. So in the input class, I've already taken care of this by adding the mouse x delta and mouse y delta. And whenever the mouse moves, we just compute the delta by subtracting the current mouse position from the previous frame's mouse position. Super simple stuff. And by having this all in one class, we can track snapshots of the state of the mouse and keyboard for the current and previous frame in a simple and easy way. So back to the camera. Since we know how far the mouse has moved this frame, we can convert the x and y movement into spherical coordinates. So basically turning those into phi and theta coordinates. At this point, we need to convert those into a rotation. And there's no single way to do this. You can do it however you want. You can use a matrix 4. You can use the 3.js object 3D API, doesn't matter, do whatever you want. What I chose to do was to construct a rotation around the y-axis, and another one around the x-axis, and the final rotation is just those two rotations multiplied together. 
Now we create this update camera call, which just copies our rotation into the 3.js rotation. Easy peasy. We've got a functioning camera now. I can move the mouse around and look in the same direction, so this is definitely on the right track. But we can't move around yet, so let's implement that. I'm adding this update translation function to the camera class, and the first thing we need to do is check what keys are pressed. Since I'm using the WASD keys, I'll check WS for forwards backwards and SD for left right strafing. Now we need to know which way is forward, so we use the phi rotation to build a quaternion, and since OpenGL is a right-handed coordinate system, 0, 0, negative 1 is the default forward. We transform that by our rotation, and we have the forward direction for wherever we're facing. Yay! Left is basically the same deal, but you use negative 1, 0, 0. Then all that's left is actually copying this into the camera's position, and we're golden. And here you have it. We can look around, we can move, but it's all kind of weirdly smooth and unnatural like you're on a camera dolly track. So let's add a bit of camera movement. The standard go-to move is to add a bit of head bobbing using a sine wave. So we'll do that. An easy way to do this is to accumulate a value whenever you're moving. So in this case, we're checking if there's been any movement and then storing that in head bob active. Then when you're updating the camera, you can just add a small offset to the Y position using a sine wave. And we'll just multiply that by some hard-coded constants to make it a bit faster. There we go, head bobbing. I can move around and we bob up and down. And obviously if I stop walking, I don't keep bobbing up and down. I guess you could add some breathing or something, but I'm not gonna bother. One thing to notice though is that when I move forward, let's use a way bigger bob effect to show this. Notice that when I move forward, whenever I let go of the keyboard, it stops at whatever height in the wave function I happen to be at. And that seems wrong. So what I'm doing here is we're basically going to compute how many steps we've taken by taking the timer, multiplying by the frequency, turning that into an integer, and that way that'll allow us to stop at the end of a step instead of mid-step. There you go. Now you kind of move forward, but it finishes the step instead of awkwardly stopping in the middle. One more thing that's kind of annoying me here. When you, as a person, walk, obviously your head goes up and down as you move. But you do compensate a bit naturally by keeping your focus point fixed. You don't just bob your vision randomly up and down as you're taking steps. But here we do. It's a bit easier to visualize it now that I've added this little aiming reticule thing. You can see that what we focus on goes up and down with the head bobbing. And personally, I find it super annoying. So let's add a little bit of nuance here. What I've done is stored all the objects in the scene in an array called this.objects. And I'm just looping through and casting a ray forward from our camera. You could totally use ammo.js or whatever physics library you want, but let's keep things simple here and not involve any extra libraries for now. The overall goal here is just to figure out what you're looking at. So what we're doing is we'll take whatever you're staring at and modify the camera's final rotation a bit, just a tiny little bit, and force it to look at the intersection point. And we can do this super easy since we kept our own rotation and position separate from the 3.js camera. And once you do that, you'll notice that the movement is just a tiny bit smoother. There's still the head bobbing movement going on, but it kind of comes off a bit more natural since your focus point remains intact. Let's kill off the silly bounce that I have going on, add a tiny bit of camera smoothing, some nicer textures, and some post effects that I lifted from Garrett Johnson. Check his GitHub out and it's starting to look pretty cool. It's not finished, but hopefully this gets you at least thinking about these tiny little flourishes and subtle details that can really impact the final look and feel. Code's all up on GitHub. Go nuts. Until next time, cheers.